We're given in this question that y is equal, uh, x is equal to uh, sec of y over 2. Now straight away you should remember that as x is the subject of the formula we have x in terms of y's. Um, you're going to use the rule dy by dx is going to equal 1 divided by dx dy. So we're going to differentiate with respect to y here. So let's have a go at doing that for part a. So we've got that x is equal to sec of y over 2. And, and tell the examiner that you're differentiating with respect to y. So we're going to have dx by dy is the difference of this. Now by the chain rule, you differentiate with respect to y inside the brackets, you get a half. And the differential of sec, well, it's in the formula booklet. It's sec of y over 2 tan of y over 2. And that is in the formula booklet. At this point, I'm trying to get my answer for dy over dx to have x's in it and x squared, etc. So I want it to have all secs in it, no uh, tans in it at all. So I, I need to remember a formula that I have, and I should remember that 1 plus tan squared theta is equal to sec squared theta. So in particular, for our case, uh, tan squared of y over 2 must be sec squared y over 2 subtract 1, taking 1 off both sides. So therefore tan of y over 2 would be sec squared y over 2 take away 1 square rooted. So it would be in terms of x, given that x is equal to sec y over 2, it would be the square root of x squared subtract 1. So at this point here, I could write a half. Sec y over 2 is x and I could write the square root of x squared subtract 1. Now I could tidy that up, the 1 and the x and this root goes on top, so this would be x, the square root of x squared subtract 1, all divided by 2, and that is dx by dy, but I didn't want that, I wanted dy by dx. Now we know that um, y is between 0 and pi in this case, so therefore co cos um, is it, it has to be less than pi, so cos is certainly a positive number. So I can flip this without any tr trouble, and it's going to be 2 over x, subtra uh, the square root of x squared, subtract 1. Great, that in case you didn't get uh, understand what I was saying there, because I know that y is between 0 and pi, I know that x, um, which is equal to sec of y, y over 2, which is the same thing as 1 over cosine of y over 2. I know that x, if I put 0 in, this is 1, and if I put pi in, um, I would get myself, um, I, I can never put pi in, and pi is the point where cos y over 2, that would be equal to 0. So because I have to be uh, less than pi, I will never get 0. So I know that when I flip uh, this, so I know that x is between um, uh, 0 and 1 and it can't be 0 so when I flip it it's absolutely fine. So that's dy by dx and find an equation for the tangent to that curve at the point where x is equal to pi by 3. So y is equal to, we've got a new part, y is equal to the square root of 3 plus cosine x at the point x is pi by 3 so 3 plus 2 cosine x where x is equal to pi by 3, and I'm, I'm asked to find the equation of the tangent. Now straight away what would be a good idea is to differentiate this on the calculator, the square root of 3 plus 2 cosine of x, and I'm going to put in x is pi by 3, like that, and I know my gradient should be negative 0.433. So I know when I work out my m, it should be negative 0.433, just as a check method for when I actually do this. So y is going to be equal to 3 plus 2 cosine x to the power of a half. I differentiate this by the chain rule, dy by dx. Well, I'm going to bring down the power of a half, differentiate inside the brackets, which will be negative 2 sine x, and then I'm going to keep the bracket 3 plus 2 cosine x to the negative a half. Okay, so tidying that up, dy by dx, I'm going to keep uh, the negative 2 sine x on the top, and on the denominator I'm going to have this 2 here, and I'm going to have 3 plus 2 
cosine x and all of that to the power of a half or a square root. So I'm going to substitute in now, I'm going to work out dy by dx when x is equal to pi by 3 and see what I get. Now does it ask it in terms of decimals? No, it asks for an exact equation. So we're going to have to say negative 2 sine of pi by 3 divided by 2, 3 plus 2 cosine of pi by 3 all to the half. Okay, well sine of pi by 3 is sine of 60 and sine of 60 is root 3 over 2. So this is negative 2 multiplied by root 3 over 2 on the top. And the bottom, I've got that 2 here, I've got the 3 and this is plus 2. The cosine of 60 is a half and all of that to the power of a half. So th this would end up being negative root 3 on the top. I'd have 2 um, and 3 plus um, 1 is going to be 4. And this is 4 to the half, so it's root 4. So it's 2 times uh, 2, that's going to be 4. So this is going to be negative root 3 over 4. That's going to be my gradient. Get my calculator up. Is that the same as negative root 3 over 4? Well, negative root 3 over 4 absolutely negative 4.33 as I wrote earlier so I've got that correct so that therefore is my uh, gradient uh, I'm going to need a point on the curve so when x so we're trying to find when x is equal to pi by 3 when x is equal to pi by 3 y what was the y value well, y is going to be the square root of 3 plus 2 square root of 3 plus 2 cosine pi by 3 and that's going to work out to be equal to um, the square root of 5 I think so let me just check on my calculator so I'm substituting in 3 plus 2 cosine um, pi over 3 and I get uh, two. Uh, I get two. Yes, yeah, sorry, because this is a half. Okay, I get two. Yes, because this here would be a half. Two times a half is one, and the square root of four this would be. So y subtract two is equal to m, which is negative root three over four. X subtract pi by three, and that would be the equation of uh, the tangent to the curve. I could. Tidy this up by multiplying everything by 4 if I wanted. And I could make a, simplify it further, but it should be fine like that in the exam. And indeed, you get full marks unless they ask you to leave it in some form like this. Um, if they didn't say that, leaving it in that form or well, that form is absolutely fine.